Lovely lasses bid you welcome to a festival of flowers as the New South Wales city of Goulburn ushers in its annual lilac time. Gay blossoms are a perfect frame for a city in gala dress. In 1962, Catholic anger boiled over in Goulburn, New South Wales, not far from Canberra. Goulburn was a very Catholic town. By the early 60s, more than 2,000 children were at seven Catholic primary and secondary schools. The cause of the blow-up now seems bizarre. Government school and health inspectors demanded three extra toilet seats at Our Lady of Mercy Preparatory. The bishop said he couldn't afford it. The row made national headlines. Four Corners compiled this gripping report. This lavatory was condemned as being unsuitable and too small for the number of pupils attending this school. The health departments and the education department demanded that it be renovated. But the Catholic bishop here said that they couldn't afford to and asked the state to help. The answer was no. The next thing we know, a decree was issued that the school's registration would be removed by a certain date if the toilets were not done. And the bishop made it quite clear that uh, what he said was the truth. We didn't have the money to do it. But the state government hadn't counted on Goulburn's Bishop John Cullinane. Normally a shy retiring man, he decided to act. On a Sunday, he invited 40 Catholic parents to discuss what to do. One was a local solicitor, J.B. Mullen. The final suggestion that came about from Mr. J.B. Mullen, who's not renowned for his radical ideas, uh, he suggested that all the schools closed. And the impact of that on the meeting was quite effective. On Monday, the 9th of July, 1962, 700 people met at Goulburn's Lilac Time Hall, a building known locally as the Praying Mantis. The proposal before them was a strike to close down the Catholic schools and send their children to flood the state schools. To my amazement, there was a, a large measure of opposition to the motion that we could even think of closing the schools. It, it was more emotional than intellectual, but believe you me, it, it, it was emotional. There were vigorous speeches on both sides. Uh, one woman claiming that she'd uh, march on Parliament House uh, rather than sacrifice her children, put them in the firing line, so to speak. But when it was put to the vote, the overwhelming majority of parents said yes, close the schools. Watching on silently was a prince of the church, the much-respected historian Eris O'Brien, Archbishop of Canberra, Goulburn. Catholics in those days were much more likely to obey the wish of the, of the Archbishop. And in fact, I think had he said, well, look, I've listened to you, but you mustn't do it, we probably wouldn't have carried on with the strike. And then at the end of it, he made a very courageous statement saying that if you as good citizens and good Catholics want to exercise your democratic right to make a protest, I will not restrain you. That remark was not understood immediately by reporters. They asked the question, what does that mean? To which Bishop Cullinane told them on the side, it means the schools are closing. And so back to Goulburn. On Monday, July the 16th, 1962, the gates of seven Catholic schools swung firmly closed. 1,350 Catholic kids, with their bags and cut lunches, turned up to enrol at the already swollen state schools. The strike was on. We have tried for 80 years by uh, speech and talk uh, to influence them, and we hope that, having failed in that way, that this action in Golden will help the people to see what we feel is a just claim and an evident one. As we marched down, we could see other groups of school children more marching towards the high school. And uh, there was a, a bit of a sense of excitement and adventure because it was something different from the normal run of the, run of the mill school day. And uh, finally the, the children did arrive and uh, there was a great deal of commotion and, and confusion. In fact, at one stage, the, uh, the reporters and the journalists had to be asked to leave the school grounds. There was so much worry and upset. Did you say I've got a lot to learn? It must have been chaos, but at Goulburn High, they did their best. 
like the English teacher, Jack Clues. I welcomed them as uh, students. Uh, I said I wanted them to enjoy their stay with us, no matter how long it was, and we'd do our best to meet their needs in education. And I said, for both of us, I hope it'll be a, a learning experience. And there was just masses of people and we were waiting to get into the hall and we had to sit and wait for ages to find out, you know, what were they going to do with us. And I guess that was the impact of it. You know, government schools really couldn't accommodate all of us and they would take just some of us. It turned out that Golden High, the only state high school, and three primary schools had room for less than half the Catholic students who applied to enrol. The others looked like going without an education. For those who did get in, it was a bit of a culture shock. Despite the avalanche of publicity for the state aid cause, the strike organisers were worried about the impact of the closure on the children. The original plan had been to strike for six weeks. We received a press and publicity which was tremendous. It exceeded, in fact, our wildest expectations. In the end, J.B. Mullen announced that in everyone's interest, the strike would end. But the battle would go on with a national lobby group to ensure that state aid became a red-hot political issue. In 1963, Bob Heffron's New South Wales Labor government, Catholic back, right wing, stuck a toe in the waters of state aid with money for school science laboratories. Consternation. The faceless men of the ALP federal executive overturned that decision leaving Labour in Parliament with egg all over the face. The Liberal Prime Minister, Robert Menzies, a Presbyterian, seized his chance. He called a snap election, with God on side. We must all thank God that the work of the church goes on and that it will provide what to me is the essential and inevitable background of a civilised, instructional, and educational cause.